Il en va de l'expression économie circulaire. The expression circular economy is pretty much like all of the other expressions that are trying to talk about environmentalization of society, which in a sense is relatively unpopular. And the strategy is to find a name with a very elastic meaning. Sustainable development, you have low sustainability, high sustainability, and the same with transition, and the same with the circular economy, because there are uses of the term that are relatively different. There's something that's very soft on the one hand, something that's very demanding on the other hand. What we could do is try to establish a kind of nomenclature of the three different meanings. They are not exclusive. In fact, they are cumulative. The first one integrates the second, and the third integrates the two others. So there's no exclusivity. And if you stop at level one, it's already a necessary step to move on to level two. So the first meaning of the expression, circular economy, is when you stop in terms of the objects you can produce, in terms of the manner in which you can produce them, or where you produce them. You can make a number of efforts. But of course, if you just stop there, and if the products, for instance, because they use less energy or less materials, and are therefore less expensive, which makes them more affordable, you result in the rebound effect. So a circular economy cannot be measured on the scale of an isolated company or a particular object. A circular economy means that you need to take into account all of the flows in a company. And as you have seen with François Gross, you will know, you would have understood that beyond a certain growth rate for the consumption of a, a given resource, above 1%, the part that can be recycled will be very small once it is reintroduced after it has dwelt in the economy compared to the volume consumed. And you may remember that if you surpass a 1% growth rate, recycling only allows a saving of a, a very tiny part of the resources. So moving forward in the circular economy means passing from this micro level to take into account all of the flows and say that beyond a certain growth rate, it's not a circular economy at all, whatever the efforts you can make on the lower level. So, in the truly circular economy, you only take into account the consumption of a given resource and the fact that you can rotate it, uh, a kind of stock rotation with low extraction. That is very important, and it's already a huge step forward that many have not reached to reach the second level of authentically circular economy. But you can add a third level to that, the third plane where we'll be talking about perma-circular economy, where you do not merely extract little, lower amounts, live on the stocks. What you do is that you reintegrate the economic activities within the system and take into account the limitations of the planet. And as you know very well, the reason uh, we have uh, gone above the limits for four of these is the uh, level of the flows of uh, materials and energy. So the problem is not just using the same flows, it's to reduce these flows, to reduce demographics, and to pay attention to all of our interactions with the system. And there we will talk about Permacircular economy. And if you talk about the meaning of permacircularity, there are even broader considerations than that. There are considerations of going beyond the duality between men 
and nature, more harmonious relationships with living beings. We're not going to go into that, but what we will remember is that the first level of the permacircular economy pays attention to the flows, and we need to reduce these flows to be uh, to have a more sober use of consumption. We need to reduce the flows of phosphorus, of nitrogen, and so on. Everything needs to be reduced. It's, of course, very difficult, and it's going to require a lot of time. And that is what is known as the Perma Circular Economy Plan. So, of course, one of the means to achieve this, if we reduce the flows, we live on our reserves. But it's not the only thing to take into consideration. Another very interesting thing in an authentically circular approach is that you must substitute to the raw materials that are extracted or mined. You need to use secondary raw materials, meaning recycled. But there are a lot of mined or extracted materials that can be biosourced from the ecosystems. Environmental engineering has made huge progress in recent years. There are a great number of things that can be replaced by biosourced materials from the ecosystems themselves. Of course, they need to be grown agroecologically in order not to lose on one side what you gain on the other. That's also a very important aspect of a truly circular economy and of a permacircular economy. A few words about the permacircular economy. Economics cannot be understood on their own. It is not just a layer of society that is independent from all the others. If you want to set yourself an ambitious target, the target of a planet that changes, you need to rethink society as a whole, and that requires uh, that we take into consideration the manner in which these uh, goals are set democratically. And then there's a kind of truly different paradigm where you go beyond um, the characteristics of modern civilization. Uh, that started towards the late 16th or early 17th century, the idea that human beings are totally independent from other living beings, that they have no responsibility towards them and that they can uh, ignore them entirely. So this dualism is being reversed. Just to show you the broader prospects of what can be called a permacircular economy, that means that we need to review all of the manners in which society operates in order for the economy to democratically become permacircular. Indirectly, uh, we criticize sustainable development, but the sustainable development goals of the UN have, in a sense, relaunched the notion. So let's just focus on a few critical aspects. Uh, let's be critical of these uh, SDGs. They, they don't need to be thrown away, but we must understand that their harmony with a truly circular economy is not necessarily possible. Can you reach that with a growth rate that does not go beyond 1%? It's an open question. As for permacircularity, the question is even more doubtful. The first criticism of the SDGs is that there is no concern for the mutual harmony. Are they all compatible? between themselves. And even more importantly, of course, these SDGs were designed independently, but independently of the issues of the terrestrial system and planetary limitations. That's a huge challenge, of course. The living standards of the four billion or so human beings uh, who are the poorest is absolutely insufficient, and it needs to be improved. So that in itself is a challenge, but it's a challenge if we do not want to go beyond the limitations of the planet. And then, of course, without a permacircular economy, those who consume a lot do not consume less. If they do not consume less, it will be very difficult to integrate both aspects. Oh, 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 oh,